In today's video, I'll be showing you how to replace the glass on an Apple Watch Series 4 44mm. Um, you can see that the glass is severely broken here. Um, if you haven't seen some of my previous videos, you'll want to check them out. We talk about uh, um, the different components of them, and that'll give you an idea of this one. Like on the Series 1, we have the LCD, the digitizer, and the glass, all as three separate pieces. Um, whereas on, say, like the Series 2, like this one right here, the uh, there on the, the left, the glass and digitizer are one piece. Um, and uh, they aren't separable like they are on the Series 1 and, and now the Series 4. Um, and here the Series 3 again, so you guys can see that. Um, I do recommend watching these videos because I do go over some details that, that uh, I may skip. Um, and uh, also, I'd recommend watching one of my iPhone uh, X uh, glass repairs because I talk about the digitizer and the digitizer on the, the Series 4 is almost identical to the way that it works on the iPhone X. It's um, something that can be easily damaged and you need to take that into consideration and even the repair. Um, anyway, well, let's get started with the repair. Alright, first things first, we're going to go ahead and uh, um, get the uh, glass up. I took some time and popped out some of the shards that were holding it back. On the underside here, you'll see that there are uh, uh, three flex cables and uh, two of the copper strips as well that are ad adhering the, uh, the flex cables down, so you'll need to carefully Pry those back, you'll see the black portion is, uh, is sticky. Once you've done that, you'll need to pull up the little stickers that are covering the connectors. This uh, material is thinner and stickier than on all the previous models, so it's really hard to uh, get it up without mangling it. Carefully reach in and pry up each one of the connectors. So that you can free it and pull it away from the pull the display away from the rest of the device. Make sure you pull directly out, don't pull up or anything, you need to go directly backwards. That's what the inside of it looks like. Here I've gone ahead and Put some tape around it to keep all the glass in one place and I'll go ahead and align it with my vacuum on this heat plate so that it doesn't move. We'll let it warm up for a few minutes. I've got the temperature set at around 80 degrees Celsius I believe. So it's a fairly hot heat plate. These displays can take quite a bit of heat but they are very sensitive especially the digitizer in these cases. So I carefully take my wire, as you might be able to see, and I slide it in between the adhesive and the digitizer. Uh, this isn't something that could be done on the Series 2 or 3. Sorry for the shakiness, I didn't realize until partway through that the, uh, the vacuum uh, had uh, was causing vibration in the table and messing with my camera. But it wasn't something that I could really easy correct, easily correct, so uh, just... Uh, Bear with it, it isn't that um, necessary to see this perfectly clearly anyway. But uh, one thing that you'll have to see is uh, uh, as you do this, you'll have to avoid all the different uh, glass pieces that I point out here. I've got um, some glass shards that I was not able to uh, remove, and they'll be in the way, and so you have to manipulate the wire and uh, pulling and, and the letting up on different sides of the wire as you as you slice through so that you don't put any pressure on the edge of the digitizer because if you do that with a wire that's this thin it acts like a blade it will cut right into the digitizer and then it can get down into the layers of the, of the display like the polarizer and uh, it's a, it's a it's a replaceable if you get into the digitizer but if you get into the polarizer or anything on the actual display then it's pretty much toast and you have to get a a whole new display and they're super expensive um, in the high 200s nearly $300 right now uh, hopefully that price goes down in the future because when people break the display it's just like buying a whole new watch 
whereas buying a new glass and digitizer is, is uh, you know, less than half the cost of that display. They're still expensive, they're still, you know, 150 or so uh, for a new uh, glass digitizer piece, but uh, definitely less expensive than a new watch. Now one thing I will mention, if you have not done any watch repair before, if you've never replaced a glass on a, on a, any of the previous series, I would not recommend this for your, you know, as a DIY repair. It's a very, very difficult repair. Um, a lot can go wrong, and uh, I may make it look easy in, at certain points in the video. It's not, it's not easy at all. I, you know, you know, it takes hours to do. Um, a lot of a lot of uh, knowledge has to go into um, knowing how to manipulate the wire, for example, around these these different sections, so that you don't uh, damage the display. Um, and uh, you know, so, if you're if you're wanting to attempt it because you think you can, go for it. But I, I highly recommend um, only doing this if you've uh, had previous experience, maybe even. Uh, refurbishing an iPhone X screen. If you have been able to successfully get the glass or the digitizer off the iPhone X LCD or uh, um, a display, uh, then uh, then you'll probably be able to do this, but if you haven't done that, I'd recommend trying um, to do other repairs similar to that in order to, to get that, uh, to I guess, to have the knowledge and ability to do this type of repair. This is not a very. This is not easy at all. Much more difficult than any of the other series uh, of watches up to this point. Looks like I just have a little bit left there with a the wire. We should be uh, free and clear. Sometimes the adhesive kind of re-sticks, and so you'll need to cut through it a couple times with the wire. Never force the display up. They are flexible to a certain extent, but. Uh, to a certain extent is uh, I guess the key in that Here, I'll go ahead and take the wire in and it again each time being aware of, uh, of the glass pieces making sure I'm not putting too much pressure on, on any portion of the edge of the, the digitizer and we'll go ahead and lift that up it's stuck again so we'll take the wire in it again to make sure we can get it separated Now I got lucky on this one, I was able to cut everywhere in between the uh, uh, adhesive and the, uh, the digitizer, it's not always the case, a lot of the time you have to remove some adhesive, I just have the, uh, the lines that the, uh, that the wire has made. We'll go ahead and uh, move the heat plate out of the way and get to cleaning the, uh, the display. To do this I use uh, acetone and uh, clean room wipes and I find the display looks kind of cool because you can see through the top corners. Uh, we'll go ahead and use a clean room wipe and some, some acetone. We'll gently uh, wipe the, the, uh, the residue from the adhesive off. Don't put too much pressure in any given spot, you may end up damaging the display uh, as well. From here, we'll want to uh, test the display, we'll want to test the touch, want to make sure that the digitizer is still intact. Um, there's a, it's basically super sensitive around the edges, and also uh, the, the, uh, the flex cable that folds over the display that, uh, uh, for the touch screen, uh, it has uh, corners that are exposed and can be easily damaged as uh, the glass is removed, as you pull it up from the uh, the watch um, and uh, you'll want to you know, make sure that the, the touch is working before you go ahead and just install a new glass piece on there. Um, right, we, we can see the display is working if the watch needs to be charged so let's go ahead and plug it in and see, what, see if it'll come on. Here it comes. There we go. It's turning on. We'll want to test the touch a little bit make sure it's still working. A little tricky to do while filming with one hand and having a display that moves around on you. But you, you do what you 
gotta do, I guess. Go. See if the touch is working. To the extent that I can show that. At this point. Alright, the next step is going to be applying uh, a dollop of uh, loca. It's liquid optical clear adhesive. And we'll go ahead and take our new glass lens and we will carefully let it touch the, uh, the loca and spread out evenly to the edge. Now I find the easiest way to allow this to, to settle naturally is to let it sit. So this may be a little boring for you, um, but uh, as you can see it's sitting there for quite a while and it's slowly making its way to the edge and it will eventually spread all the way out. I'll take a moment here to say that if you if you like what you see so far, go ahead and uh, uh, like the video. Um, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and turn on notifications. I try to post videos every time I find some repair interesting or something that I would have wanted to have had a demonstration on before attempting. Um, I, I like to put things out there that are uh, maybe a little bit more difficult. Seeing as uh, watches are very difficult, I love those repairs that I wanted to share with the world how to how to fix them um, and also if you need to fix your your series 4 uh, you can contact me with a with an email that will be provided in the description below or you can uh, um, send the watch and to get it fixed i can definitely fix it up like i did this one for you um, like i'm doing for the customer that sent this one in to me so all right, now that I've let it sit long enough, I'm confident that if I give it a little bit of pressure, I can push out the bubbles. This isn't something I'd recommend doing early on because you'll regret it with a lot of bubbles. And uh, it's something that if you don't have an autoclave um, to get out the bubbles, I wouldn't recommend it. And uh, most of you probably don't have an autoclave or, or a pressure pot at home to put this in, but I do. So we'll go ahead and put that in there for a few minutes. and. Uh, That'll allow us to make sure the bubbles are completely gone um, from the from the inside. Next thing I'll do is I'm going to flash it a few times with the UV light, make sure it's aligned. The UV light's going to cure the loca onto the display. Make sure it's uh, uh, nice and centered, and this will give us a beautiful finish. Um, making sure we have no bubbles, no no uh, contaminants in there, and. Uh, Get it nice and aligned so that when we turn it on, it looks like it never broke in the first place. Once I'm confident that it's uh, been centered, I'm going to hit it for quite a bit of uh, quite a few minutes with the with the light. I'm going to clean it in the process just to make sure uh, I uh, am, am not missing any of the bubbles. And then on the inside, I'm going to go ahead and clean it up. Now, here I, I like to be a little more careful, and I use 99% alcohol, isopropyl alcohol to uh, clean up the inside of any residue from the loca that leaked in. Um, I like to take my time there with that and go around the edge. And then once I've cleaned up any spill out, and uh, you know, I, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the inside with the, the UV light and make sure we cure any of the, uh, the borders of the display as well so that the uh, loca doesn't seep into the, the device, which even if it did, it'd be so small that it wouldn't do anything because there's not a lot left in there anyway. We'll go ahead and the front again with the light, make sure it's definitely solidified and everything looks good. And then the next step is simply testing it and making sure that it works. Now if you have an idea of a video you'd like me to do, feel free to comment in the section below. Um, I, uh, I'm not always aware of what people are wanting to see I just put up what I want to um, I would have wanted to see so right, here we go it's turning on I like to keep a protector on it at a lot of you know, most times just so I don't scratch the glasses and I'm not getting ready to put it back together so the customer has a beautiful uh, looking watch when I'm done so a little weird with the that angle there we go now you can see clearly that the touch is working everywhere still which means we successfully 
are able to replace just the glass on this watch. It's not always the case where you have a perfect touch screen, in which case you will need to replace the digitizer as well. All right, here's the watch all back together, looking as beautiful as ever. Customer's gonna be very happy. They had a few dings and dents in the frame and I was able to get out to, uh, you know, to the extent that they could come out without leaving any, any marks. You saw at the beginning how bad it was. Thanks for watching, you guys.